Hey guys, today we're going to sit down with an Epic consultant and find out how you can become one yourself. We're speaking with Vince today. Vince had no formal training in information technology or anything clinical. So how does someone like that become so well accomplished in his goals and getting the job he wants? Hey Vince, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, so I know that you're an Epic consultant now. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and how you like it so far? Um, yeah, no problem. Um, I work on Epic as a consultant. I'm an analyst and um, I basically help configure the systems um, for how the hospital needs it to be. Um, and specifically, I, I work on the lab, the lab team of it. So, you know, for a lot of patient care, one of the, the first things is um, lab work and that can be customized across the um, all the different aspects of lab like blood or or urine or micros um and i basically just help the lab and the hospital side configure to the system to what they need it to be cool and so um actually you know let, let me back up for a second i probably didn't mm -hmm. phrase it correctly um what can you tell us what epic is yeah, EPIC is a um, EMR, so electronic medical record system. Um, it's used for, for hospitals, for clinics. It has billing components to it, scheduling components to it. Um, it's a very large, probably has the biggest market share in US for um, you know clinical documentation systems. So basically, I just tell everyone, you know, when you go to a, a a doctor or a hospital and then they document why you're here today what your symptoms are and then they write notes about you that whole system is um the emr and the company that i work with a lot is called epic gotcha so that makes a lot more sense and you described um the lab portion of it so is epic like the all-encompassing emr and does it support multiple components for each department such as lab as you're saying yeah, so I think Epic as a whole, um, I think some some institutions, they might take Epic as a whole package and say, like, we're going to use you guys for inpatient, for outpatient, for lab, for um, cardiology, you know, et cetera. And then I think what you see a lot is that before Epic got really popular um, and before a lot of hospitals have, you know, different contracts with each other and as hospitals buy each other, you'll see like a combination of systems so like one hospital might have epic for their inpatient and another might have another system like cerner or something for the outpatient um it could all be in the same hospital and then yeah it, it's kind of the same i think across all the different systems with a little bit of uh their differences i think for the most part uh, most companies try to offer as much as they can gotcha thanks for that explanation so um, to become an Epic analyst or consultant, I've heard that it's it's difficult. And so can you tell us about your journey and how you got there? Yeah, so uh, I first started out at LabCorp and I was just in their IT side doing um, new installs for their customers. And they have a proprietary system that, you know, you just go and install the product. Um, so it was always kind of healthcare IT-ish. And then... Uh, the way that I got in was I went to go work for a hospital um, that had the system and they just needed to bring more people in to help support it, maintain it and install new um, new projects and features as it went along. Um, so that's one of the most common ways to, to become an analyst. And then after being an analyst for a while, I went to another system and you know, worked there for a bit. And then um, I went into consulting and basically consulting is you kind of like the same thing except you work contract to contract instead of a a full-time job like your usual um work life uh so kind of like how nurses will, might go from like uh, inpatient or outpatient setting they become like travel nurses and a lot of uh consultants were were traveling um nowadays i think there's a lot more remote just because of covid and everything else that's happened um but yeah that, that was basically my journey Gotcha. I think that um, that comparison to the traveling nurses makes a lot of sense, especially to the audience members who are most likely going to be nurses or clinical staff. So thank you for that. 
Yeah, yeah, they probably have a, a easier time breaking in if they're already in the healthcare field. Um, it, I think a lateral jump like that into the IT side is kind of easier than someone with neither experience, right? So like, if someone knows clinical, they can just say like, I can teach you IT, but I can't teach you clinical. And at the same time, if someone's already in IT, they're like, all right, let's try to give you some, some clinical knowledge for this. So yeah, I think anyone who's already in a nursing field at a hospital, especially if they use Epic or another um, EMR, it, the jump should be a lot easier. I see. Okay, so um, did you have any IT experience at all when when you first started? Not really. Um, I was always tech savvy, but I, I didn't have real IT experience. And I learned most of my um, technical experience on the job at LabCorp, which is what you'll see for most jobs that like you'll learn the majority of it on the job. Um, no, I didn't have a whole lot, but I think being being savvy and understanding how systems work, how database works, how networking works, and it all speaks to each other, then, then having that core understanding helps a lot. And then you can kind of like customize it to each facility. But um, no, I didn't have, I didn't come out of school with like, you know, five years of XYZ experience. Gotcha. So I'm um, sure you have a vast, uh, like a, a multitude of uh, knowledge for things in within the field. But when you first started, did you have a really good understanding of HL7, of DICOM, of any of the, the medical standards? No, not at all. <laughs> when I first started, so you mean when I first started at LabCorp or when I first started at um, EMRs? Well, um, let's start with LabCorp. No, did not. So the LabCorp job, it was mostly like um, setting up systems for customers that were coming on to use LabCorp and specifically on the technical side, right? Like how can they order and how can they view results? So for LabCorp, they have like three products that they roll out to their customers. And each of those three products, it was dumbed down to a point where like they could hire someone with common sense and say like, here, I need you to go install this, right? Here's the manual, go over there and, and install it. Um, so no, not really. When I got into the hospital side and I was working on it, like I've heard of the terminologies, but I didn't really understand it. And then most places when you start, they'll give you, if you have no experience and no certifications, they'll give you like six months, nine months, whatever to just do nothing but get certified. So you go to Epic, you go to class, um, very regimented you know, curriculum. And then you come back, you take some tests, and you do some projects. And then for most projects or most certifications, I think you do about three of them and then you get certified. And then once you get certified, then you start going into the system and start playing around with it. Um, I would say all you, the majority of your learning comes from that moment on afterwards. Like, like how you go to school from like kindergarten to high school or college for whomever or even more I would say up until that point it's just kind of like building the foundation and then when you go out into the working world then you really start to see everything and learn everything um so to answer your question no I think once I started once I was certified and I started solving real live issues in real time that's when I learned that's when I like started to ask people like how do I do this and this and for this ticket and that ticket and then with the experience, you start to learn stuff. And then it, at, at some point it clicked for me that like, okay, everything is one big database systems. And then the HL7 that's used to like send messages across different systems from like Epic to Cerner. And then like, once that light bulb goes off, then you put everything together. And then, you know, that's when you can customize using your foundation. Wow. That's uh, that's great. I think that's really good information. Um, so let's talk about your your clinical knowledge then. Um, how did you get the? How did you learn like uh, medical terminology, anatomy, and physiology? <laughs> um, borderline. Like I didn't really have a whole lot. Like I went to the doctor a lot, so <laughs> okay. that was my learning, right? Like, like between going to the doctor and before going to the doctor, I would Google stuff on Dr. Google. And then that's when I learned a lot of the whole clinical terminology. And then I had friends in the healthcare world, right? So I have friends who are doctors, who are nurses, and just like, just like chit, chit chatting about it and going to the bar with people and, and chatting like, oh, what do you do for work? And then they talk about their cases, whatever, right? Like my, my wife was in um, 
cardiothoracic research and then I think at, at some point she were she was in maternal fetal growth research so you just like as you get to know people and what they do and like really like just learn about what their whole day-to-day -day is like then you kind of just pick up and then you you're starting to able to like talk the talk but um you know I think for a lot of people who have more of a clinical background through a traditional uh school method I think yeah you're going to learn your a &Ps, your your biologies, your, you know, chemistries. I wasn't really like that great at school. So like, I've heard of it there, but like, I, I need like real <laughs> life experience <laughs> to apply it. Yeah. Like it's just hard for me to just read something out of a book and be like, Oh, okay. That's what it is. Yeah. Someone must've mentioned something about, uh, <laughs> about chemistry, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe a professor. Or something, something yeah. Like I, I still wouldn't pass today. <laughs> So to me, it sounds like you're, it's kind of like a philosophy for you where you're just constantly learning. And it seems like to me, at least like, just even if you didn't learn it in school and even if you don't have formal training, something, it doesn't mean you can't do it. And that's my, uh, that's, that's what I'm hearing from you. Would you, would you say that's correct? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think for me personally, like the whole um, traditional schooling system, as, as we know it of like going to a lecture hall, like that wasn't really that much for me like I can't just pull words out of a book and like visualize things if I've never visualized it right like the you just don't know what you don't know but like when I talk to friends or like as we're talking now you know we could talk stop break it down explore like that one specific topic and go really deep and then come back out and go on the full picture again like that's the way I I will learn best but yeah I think for not just EMRs for anything like I love to learn nowadays and I feel like for the most part, you could pretty much figure out to do anything unless you're like inventing something new, right? Like, unless you're trying to do like some SpaceX kind of stuff that <laughs> that most people can't. But if you like don't know something like YouTube will literally show you with a video. So yeah, I think for the most part, you can learn anything even without any experience for like Epic, like anyone can do it. Wow. Yeah, that's that was a uh... That was excellent, Vince. Thank you for, for reinstating that. Um, for uh, like, so can we talk about how you got your your first job in Epic? I, you know, because, again, it wasn't hard to get in. How did you convince someone? Like, how did you convince a hospital to sponsor you? Um, yeah, it was hard. So before we get into that, I'll just break it down for everyone that um, might be interested in Epic uh, specifically. As far as I know, and I don't know if anything has changed, um, I've heard of like the main three ways. Uh, you go to a hospital, they sponsor you, they send you for training and you get your certifications. So that's one way. The second way that I've heard of is you go and work for like a big consulting firm and you're a full-time consultant on their payroll, like Accenture or Deloitte or something. And then very similar, you, they'll send you to um, certification and then put you on assignments. And then the other way that I've heard of it is um, you can actually work for Epic directly. They're based in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, they probably have a lot of headquarters now internationally. And from what I remember talking to people, you could get any certification you want while you were there. And then, you know, you'll work with the clients, the hospitals who actually um, use Epic, or you could be another role and you might never be client facing. So those are the first, like, those are the three ways. I, I don't know if anything has changed. Um, but that's what I know as, you know, as late of as like a couple of years ago, or maybe even last year. Anyway, for my first position, when I was looking, I was in like 2012 and um, it's tough. I, I don't know how it is today though, but I think it's a tough market. I think that like when you're young and you've never had a big corporate job before and you're just entering, like it's just one big question mark on the other side of the door, right? So I think now looking back on it, you start to kind of piece things together. And I probably still don't know the majority of it, but, but in a nutshell, it's, it's a tough market. Most people, they want to hire on people who come in with experience. Um, that way they save money on the certifications and the trainings and probably the, um, the turnover, right? Like, I think a lot of people, they come in, they get their certifications, they, they get enough experience and then oftentimes there's not a whole lot of upward growth so they they move out into a new hospital or wherever else 
And I think all that put together just makes managers and directors saying like, hey, I want someone ready to hit the ground running instead of like, I want someone new to invest in them and um, there's a high chance of them leaving anyway. Uh, but for me, you know, that's just the kind of stuff that I was up against. And then I didn't have a whole lot of clinical experience. I had like barely some IT experience that wasn't really like transitive to, to an epic role. So I actually would hit up anyone and everyone that I could from friends that I knew were working in the field that I wanted to be to HR to a managerial title. Um, I sent out cold emails. Sometimes I did cold calls and um, specifically for the way I got into my first job, I um, got connected to an HR person. Um, there was an application, there was like a posting that, you know, they needed some Epic analyst. I applied didn't get it and just kept in touch with them. And then they told me that, oh yeah, they have some roles coming out soon, but you know, hospital bureaucracies, they have to go through like a million hoops before they are able to post it. So I think for like the next eight months, every week or every other week, I would just keep in touch with her. Like I, I tried not to be annoying, but I just like, you know, wanted to stay on top of her radar and be like, hey, let me know when the opening is here, you know, or like I'll touch base with her before Friday ended and like, hey, let me know if there's anything I can do. And then finally she said, oh yeah, this opening came out, um, apply. And then I also had a friend who worked there. So then like they wrote on, I think my resume or my application referred by XYZ, right? And then I think just with that was like, I needed to put in all the strings to, to get in front of someone. And then I eventually got my interview, uh, did well on the interview, got a second round interview, did well. And then, you know, the last round of interviews just for formality and then got the job. So, so yeah, it's tough. And um, I think that like, if you're trying to break into something or if you want something bad enough, you really just got to like throw out all the cards and all the moves that you have. And uh, eventually you'll probably get in. Wow, <clears throat> that was awesome. So from what it sounded like to me, it sounded like you had your odds sticked against you. You didn't have IT experience or clinical experience and instead you use your network and you were just persistent. You just didn't give up. Yeah, yeah. It, I think you just kind of grit through it, especially at that entry level point. Like you really don't have a whole lot to offer people. So whoever you're competing against, like, you know, you, you better do everything and anything. That's my motto don't leave uh what is it called leave don't leave any rocks unturned <laughs> yeah or was it stones yeah i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh all right so i'm gonna cut the uh the interview short now just we're just gonna stay high level and uh put this up on youtube and see how many likes we get and see what questions the audience have for us and if it's yeah. cool to you maybe we'll get back together and just um go over those questions and answers yeah yeah sounds good um you know, happy to help anywhere I can. Awesome. And before you go, Vince, uh, just a question. If a uh, serious question here, if you were a, a cartoon, what would you look like? I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess you'd have to get a, a caricature drawn. I don't know. <laughs> right. Would you look like super smart, strong? I mean, how do you think I'd portray you in this video? How would you all portray me? Um... <laughs> Probably really smart, really strong, really good looking and tall. Like everything, just think the opposite of you. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right. Messing with you. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> thanks again, Vince. Yeah, no worries. Anytime, man.